Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 9th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remember a few weeks ago we had a crypto coin miner that installed itself on a number of PeopleSoft servers and the like using an Oracle WebLogic vulnerability. Well, it looks like this particular group is back, but this time they turned their attention to Apache Solar. Apache Solar is, well, a really sort of a database that is often used for full text searches. You find it used, for example, for website search and the like. And as such, a lot of sites may be using Apache Solar without explicitly being aware of it. And just to avoid confusion, whenever I mention Apache, this is not the Apache web server. The Apache project has many other software projects that they're covering under their umbrella. And Solar is not something that typically comes with the Apache web server. The root cause here is actually an XML external entity vulnerability. These vulnerabilities are quite common when you're parsing XML and you're not being careful in how you're validating your XML or how you're configuring your parser. In this particular case, this vulnerability can lead to arbitrary code execution and that's exactly what's being exploited here. The vulnerability became known back in October last year. All a couple days after the vulnerability was announced and patched, an exploit was released. And just like of the WebLogic uh, vulnerability, the exploit is actually relatively simple, reliable, and easy to use in various scripts, which of course helps our attackers here installing the exact same Monero miner that we have seen with WebLogic. Just like with the WebLogic vulnerability, Renato sort of took the lead on this and he actually was involved in a couple of incidents that had servers compromised using this vulnerability. The actual scripts and the crypto coin miners are absolutely identical to what we have seen with WebLogic, which kind of leads us to believe that it's probably the same group. Of course, given that these scripts have been out now for a few months, it's very possible that someone just copied them and reappropriated them using this new vulnerability. And just as Slack announced that it's going to discontinue support for its IRC gateways, well, uh, IRC certainly not dead in particular when it comes to bots and to prove this, Xavier just discovered yet another IRC bot. Uh, you're a very classic, typical IRC bot. Looks a bit different than most of the IRC bots I have seen in the way it's sort of uh, coded and uh, how it actually uses its commands. But the idea is the same, where you have the bots connecting to an IRC server waiting for commands. Now, in this particular case, it looks like the commands are somewhat sort of centered around credit card fraud. There are a couple of commands to verify credit card numbers, but also commands to get more information, for example, about PayPal accounts. And one news item that didn't make it yesterday was a number of patches released by Cisco. Nothing really all that special, just the usual hard-coded SH credentials that I think are sort of a standard feature for most Cisco equipment. This time they're getting around to eliminating them from the prime collaboration provisioning system. And the second vulnerability does affect the now defunct and no longer being sold secure access control system. That's a Java deserialization bug and it actually can lead to remote code execution as root. I used to say that Cisco always tries to hit all the OWASP top 10 in each one of its patch releases. Well, I guess with the Java deserialization bug, they're now catching up to the updated version of the OWASP top 10. And a couple of our readers pointed out that any.run, an automated malware analysis environment, has opened the gates for a free community edition of its product. Now, what it really is, is a set of virtual machines that you can control through your browser. You can 
upload files into it. You can then have them analyze and you can collect the data, what is exactly being changed on the systems. Also, you can interact with these systems. So it's not like some of these other sandboxes where you just upload the file and a while later you get a report back. Instead, you can sort of interactively affect how your sample is being executed. I think it's a pretty neat system in particular for hobbyists. Now, probably not the right thing to sort of analyze a potential zero day malware as such because it is not running in your environment. Any.run is a company based out of Russia and of course you are uploading all of the documents that you are analyzing to their servers. Well, that's it for today. Next week, I'll be in San Francisco teaching our Defending Web Applications class. If you're interested in any classes I teach, you can find them at the bottom of the podcast show note page. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.